Yes, I'm just going to walk down the county of government, open the civil dispatch amendment. Under the federal law, the judge decides that I'll say the same report. You may be seated. You may be seated. Of course, now the session is no longer approved. We're still back and forth. You may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you? You may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. What do you have first? Have a seat. The first case that we have is Antonio Davenport. Mr. Davenport. Mr. Davenport, you are charged with first degree murder of Zion Person on August 18, 2019, felony conspiracy to commit that murder. You are also charged with assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill, inflicting serious injury, attempted first degree murder on Zavion Holloway. You are also charged with four more counts of attempted first degree murder on Zia Holloway, Sakia Wilson, Danielle Ragland, Zanae White. You are charged with two counts of discharging a weapon into an occupied, I'm sorry, into a moving vehicle, inflicting serious bodily injury. Two more counts of discharging a weapon into an occupied vehicle while it was in motion. And another count of discharging a weapon into an occupied dwelling. This is all from the same transaction, Your Honor. And finally, you're charged with possession of a firearm by a felon and that you possessed a handgun when you've been convicted of secondary burglary and felony larceny. And Mr. Davenport. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Davenport has, what I need to notify the court about, I'm handing those documents up, but what I need to notify this court about is that Mr. Davenport was on pretrial release, multiple sets of pretrial release. He had some drug charges pending. The date of offense for those was April of 2017. He was on pretrial release for those. On April 19th of 2019, he picked up new charges for a domestic violence case that also involved a firearm by a felon possession. Then in Wake County on June 17th, 2019, he picked up more charges for domestic violence, was served on those. And on June 28th, 2019, he picked up more charges here in Durham for domestic violence, child abuse, possession of a firearm by a felon, and was on pretrial release for those. And then he did not come to court for those, so he had a failure to appear with a set bond from the judge when he didn't show in court for those. So he has a history of not coming to court, and he has a history of pretrial release meaning nothing to him. He's been convicted of burglary and felony plea to elude in 2016, which makes him a felon and cannot possess a firearm, although, as Your Honor sees, he now has three sets of firearm charges pending. For the court's purposes for dangerousness, he's a known gang member. He continues to violate pretrial release by carrying a gun and using it. His pending charges show a pattern of dangerousness to women and children. The domestic violence cases are against a woman. There's a pending child abuse case against his own infant child. And now the new homicide charges are for killing a 9-year-old boy and shooting an 8-year-old as well. He is the most dangerous type of person in Durham who preys on the most vulnerable victims and shows no respect for women and children. I believe there is no amount of pretrial restriction that would be sufficient to stop him from carrying a gun and using it. Additionally, Your Honor, there's some additional information I have about flight risk. I received a call from the U.S. Passport Office that Antonio Davenport had applied for a passport. And the Passport Office asked whether or not there were any travel restrictions due to pending charges. Your Honor, I know that this court is probably inclined to not set a bond. However, I would ask this court to set restrictions for electronic monitoring and an additional restriction that Mr. Davenport cannot travel outside of Durham, outside of North Carolina, or outside of the country. And if he should obtain a passport, that it must be immediately surrendered to pretrial services. If Your Honor does wish to set a bond, I would be asking for $6 million, $1 million for each of the victims. All right, I'm going to give you a court appointed attorney. Anybody want to be heard? Your Honor, yes. We understand these are still allegations at this time. We would be asking for a bond that is attainable, not a no bond in this situation. We understand the concerns that the media talked about and what was read. But we'd still be asking for a bond that is attainable at this time. Okay. Your Honor, under Marcy's law, I just do need to notify the court that Zion's mom, Ashley Ragland, is in the courtroom as well as her entire family. If Zion's family can please just raise their hands so the judge can see that you're all present here today. 
Your Honor, I don't think that they need to be heard additionally, although I'll let the court address that. Just noting that Saturday would be Zion's 10th birthday, and they should be preparing for his birthday party and his football playoffs. But what they can do is be here in court for him today, and that's what they're doing. And I thank them for being here. All right. Um, the bond will be no bond until such time. Thank you. 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 Thank you.